Hello, and welcome to Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I'm Hal Weeks, and for the past four or five months, we have been, I've been doing a tutorial of different auto harp techniques um, every week, um, going into a different technique and showing you uh, different ways that you can play your auto harp and different um, tools that you can apply to uh, given situations. And I want to continue doing that for you. I've got a lot more planned, but in order to um, extend into what I want to teach next, I need to teach you some music theory. And um, it is with great uh, trepidation that I um, start going into musical theory. Um, I was a music theory major in college, and as an auto harp player, um, there is a lot of music theory that you don't need to know. And there's a lot that you do. And uh, you do need to know it because it's uh, a way of communicating um, verbally about the music that you are playing. And it comes in handy when working with other musicians um, or just when thinking about what you're doing so that you can figure things out more easily. And um, it's a little bit like grammar in that when I say to you a sentence like, they're going to the store, it doesn't matter which form of the word there that I used. It only matters when I write it out and uh, spell it. And then it does matter, and it matters a great deal. Um, and so it's the same thing with music theory. You want to be able to express yourself and express yourself uh, clearly so that it sounds like you know what you're talking about. And so this is uh, going to be a help with that. Um, and I'm going to struggle a little bit to stay on topic because, as I said, there's a lot you don't need to know as an auto harp player, and there's a lot that you do need to know. And so I'm going to try to just keep it to the um, auto harp related things. And if it doesn't seem like what I'm doing is auto harp related, there's two possibilities. Number one is it's not, and I have veered off into some um, uh, esoteric um, theory that doesn't apply, and I'm going to try to catch myself doing that. I have a very conversational style, and that comes from just saying it. Uh, a lot of what I talk about is not scripted. Uh, I come up with a few talking points, and I've done that for this video. I've got them right over there on my music stand um, so that I can look over there and stay on topic. Um, the other possibility is that um, um, I'm teaching something that does apply to auto harp, but you don't see how yet. And so I will try to apply what I'm talking about in each case. Now, in order to aid me, um, I've set up my camera um, so that I can turn it on my piano keyboard. And um, I want to recommend that if you do not know piano keyboard, not, not being able to play it necessarily, but knowing its layout, knowing where a C is and where a C sharp is and where an A is, um, it's a very handy universal tool to use in music theory because you can see what you can't see on an auto harp or a guitar. Um, those instruments don't show you graphically the way a piano keyboard does. And I even recommend that you get a little keyboard. You know, they have those um, little Casio keyboards. Casio is one brand. Yamaha makes them. Um, you can pick up a keyboard like that new on Amazon for about 40 bucks. Um, and even better, you will see them in thrift stores a lot. Um, 
they run on batteries, they have little tiny keys. It doesn't matter. It's not an instrument that you're going to play so much as an instrument that you're going to pick out uh, chords and scale forms and things um, and learn that way. And it's a very handy thing um, to have um, to figure out melodies on and stuff like that. Um, and another thing that I want to say in preamble is um, I'm not going to teach you here how to read music. Um, that falls outside the pale of what I want to do with these, with these videos. I can teach you how to read music. Uh, I teach people online all the time, and we do go into uh, music reading. If that's something, if that's someplace you want to go, then I can do that. And who knows, maybe in some uh, distant future um, version of this tutorial, I will get into how to write music down. But um, the only way I'll use music notation in this case is uh, to show you the whys of what I'm teaching. Sometimes um, a rule is only a rule because it applies when you're writing things down and you want them to appear more clearly on the page. Um, and otherwise it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to try to stay out of music notation as much as possible. But there are times that I'll, I'll write something out on a pad, right, in real time so that you can see it. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to turn my camera around and down so that you can see my piano keyboard. I'm try going to try not to jostle you too much. And here it is. And if you are familiar with the keyboard, then this 101 stuff is going to be uh, beginner stuff for you. But who knows? I might say something that uh, has never occurred to you before. So uh, this might be interesting. And it's fun, been fun because it's taken me back to when I was about five or six years old uh, learning the keyboard. The piano keyboard, it's important to know which note is which. And we're just going to be dealing with these notes between here and here, okay? This is a C, and this is a C. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, okay? And you'll notice that there are groups of two and three black notes, okay? They go three, two, three, two, three, all right? And here at the beginning, we're not going to get into the black notes. We'll be getting into those in a few weeks. Um, so we're just going to deal with the white notes, all right? But the way you find the C is you find the two black notes that are together in a group and the note that's just below the first black note, just to the left of it, is C. All right? So if you go down two from the C, B, A. And the music alphabet is, there's only seven letters in the way music is spelled. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on and so on. So, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right. Now the first thing that I want to teach you is that this, it's called a scale, it's a, like a ladder that goes up in pitch. It's called a scale and it comes down to And that's called the major scale. And there is a scale that starts on every note. All right? If we go down to A, and every one of the scales has seven notes, there's five note scales too, and six note scales, but we're going to save that for later, all right? It's a seven note scale, and there is one tone for every letter. 
in a scale, all right? There's only one A, there's only one B, there's only one C, there's only one D. In other words, you can't have, when you're writing down a scale or you're speaking about a scale, you can't have, for example, um, a C and a C sharp in the scale. That's against the rules, all right? Because it gets everything confused. And so, uh, for example, if I was going to, here's an E, and here's an E flat, and here's a D. This E flat is also called a D sharp, all right? So in other words, D, D sharp, E, E, E flat, D, all right? So if I was having a scale that went like this, would I call this a D sharp or an E flat? Well, we've had a C and we've had a D. We can't call this D sharp. It has to be E flat because you can only have one tone per letter. We've already had our D here. We've already burned that. So we have to have an E. So we go C, D, E flat, F, G, etc., etc. All right? So you may or may not need to know that as an auto harp player, but there it is, and that's why we spell scales in a certain way. All right, now I want to talk about what's called intervals. All right, and um, we're going to talk about basic intervals that are called a step and a half step. All right, and this is going to get us into chords and scales, um, but this is uh, basically how they're constructed. They're constructed out of steps and half steps. And a step is from here to here. There's a note in between. Okay, from here to here, there's a note in between. So this is called a whole step. And when there's not a note in between, like from here to here, it's called a half step. All right, so we go from, we go whole step, whole step, half step, okay? Then from here to here is a whole step, good. From here to here, good. That's a whole step. From here to here is a whole step, and from here to here is a half step, all right? So when we play this scale from C to C, which is called, by the way, the C major scale. We go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now let's review. Whole step, whole step, half step. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So you notice I used two whole steps and then a half step and then three whole steps and a half step. And there's that two and three pattern again, two and three. And you get that two and three pattern repeating in music all the time, all right? So, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And the reason this is called a C major scale is that it goes from C to C. All right, so we have the intervals of a whole step and a half step. Half step, whole step, okay? Now, if you're on the other side of the pond from America, um, these are called tones and semitones. And sometimes you'll hear that um, in, in something written about music theory or 
somebody speaking about music theory, they'll say it's three tones or four tones uh, or uh, three tones and a semitone. Um, it's the same thing, all right? We also refer to spaces as a second, um, but I'm going to get into that later on, all right? So we have half steps and we have whole steps or tones and semitones, all right? So when we talk about a major scale, we talk about whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, which means that from any note on the keyboard, by following the whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step rule, we can construct a major scale starting on any note. And there's 12 of them because there's 12 notes here. So if we wanted a major scale on, say, E, we would go start on E, and we'd go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That's the E major scale. Now minor scales, uh, the first minor scale runs, the all note, all white note minor scale runs from A to A, all right? And it is constructed whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. And there's different forms of minor scale. Again, more advanced than we're going to get into right now, okay? I just wanted to show you the keyboard, what a scale is, and what inter the intervals of a whole step and a half step are. Next week, we're going to talk about scales and modes, okay? Because sometimes in folk music, you hear people talking about the Dorian scale or the Mixolydian scale. All right, and we're going to talk about modes, and um, then we're going to get into chords, okay, which is what you have on your auto harp. You have major chords, and you have minor chords, and you have seventh chords. So we're going to talk about those. Um, over the next couple of weeks. I don't want this to get too long, so I'm going to stop today's lesson at that point and let you go on. Watch this a few times this week if you're not familiar with this material already. And if you are, you know what to do. Um, so thanks for tuning in to Stalking the Wild Auto Harp. I'm Hal Weeks. Please subscribe to my video series if you haven't already, and um, you'll get all the updates um, as soon as they post, and I will continue posting them on Saturdays. So, um, oh, and uh, let me mention my website, which is howweeks.com. Um, I have uh, CDs for sale there and uh, digital downloads, and uh, you can find out about it all right there. And if you're interested in private lessons, I teach via Skype. I have uh, now, <laughs> I have lots of students um, and more signing up every week. So, you want to jump on that while I still have some space for new students. And um, uh, I look forward to working with you, and we'll see you next week on Stalking the Wild Auto Harp.